so basically what it does is it creates uh four guesses uh it used to be three now it's four like of what it should look like it basically four yeah just potentialities it, it determines what to put in based on how you um, prompt it um, and you can be as general as specific as you want like when i first right. started doing it i was typing in car free street right and and you said a modern pedestrian a promenade with lots of greenery benches and people and so it's taking those cues and then from an ai perspective it's coming up with these options that's yeah, awesome exactly wow and what's the name of this program again it's called dolly dolly which is okay. a d-a-l-l-e which is a play on salvador dolly and wally right yeah very very cool Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman, and that was Zach Katz with Better Streets AI. Uh, <laughs> Better Streets is really kind of taking the urbanism Twitter world by storm recently uh, by presenting uh, before and, I don't want to say after, but maybe future <laughs> or planned or dreamed uh, realities for our streets. In fact, it's a fabulous platform for better visualizing what our streets could become. It's a fascinating conversation and Zach is truly a force of nature of creativity and entrepreneurship. So let's get right to it with Zach Katz. Zach, welcome to the Active Towns podcast. Thank you for having me. Super excited to be here. So, Zach, why don't you do this? Uh, I love to have my uh, uh, guests uh, just to give a really brief uh, introduction uh, of themselves. So, who is Zach? I, uh, I am an artist, musician. Um, I've, like, sort of casually studied, like, Dutch uh, urban planning for a while. I've run a couple of businesses. Um, and, yeah, I currently run a business uh, selling Dutch bicycles to the U.S., uh, straight from the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, and as of recently, I started Better Streets AI. So Zach, you, you just mentioned something about Dutch bicycles. Uh, what on earth is that? I mean, I know about the, the you know, Better Streets uh, AI, but what is this whole thing about Dutch bicycles? Well, um, I wanted to move to Amsterdam and the best way to immigrate as an American is to start a business in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And I realized that one of the things that really struck me when I was visiting is how amazing Dutch bikes are and how ubiquitous they are. Yeah. And, uh, and then I, I sort of realized all at once, like, oh, you can't actually get these anywhere in the U.S. I searched for like hours trying to find Cortinas or burgers and you can't. So right. that's the idea there. Right. Right. Yeah. There you go. Cool. And uh, and is that also out on Twitter or how how do people find out about it? Yeah, it's real Dutch bikes dot com. OK. Uh, yeah, there's also a Twitter. But uh, yeah, nice. it's uh, we park bike shops in the Netherlands and they're shipped directly from uh, top rated bike shops uh, right to your door. Oh, fantastic. That's great. And you're, and you're absolutely right. It's uh, I've had a couple of episodes where we've talked about, uh, you know, really the power of the simple, plain Dutch bicycle. And, you know, there's just something so incredible about the, the relaxed, you know, <laughs> upright positioning. And uh, I've profiled uh, Aaron Riediger with the, the plain uh, bicycle program up in Winnipeg. And they they basically bring, you know, bicycles over in large containers. And so they'll, they'll go and, you know, retrieve a bunch of the uh, bikes that had been uh, confiscated by the police and, you know, had, had been abandoned and all that. So good stuff. Excellent. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be sure to pull up that, uh, that website that was real Dutch bikes.com. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So then that really sort of led to you like, thinking about urbanism and streets. So how is it that you started the Better Streets AI? So I, when, I was, uh, when I was living in Bushwick, uh, before I moved to the Netherlands, which was like a year ago, basically, I, uh, yeah, I really wanted to like do um, an advocacy campaign to make my street, Irving Ave, uh, uh, car-free. Um, but uh, I was kind of like, and I've run advocacy campaigns in the past in Portland. Uh, uh, I did, I led two campaigns, one for car free streets and one for a protected bike lane. And um, 
Yeah, the biggest like uh, bottleneck was always like commissioning renders because it's so important to have these renders to like show people uh, what you're proposing, uh, what's possible and exciting, inspiring them and whatnot. And um, if you don't have that, it's really like, what's the point of even doing a campaign? It's people don't care about a lot of people don't even know what a protected bike lane is. Right. So you really need to have a visual to show them. Um, and so uh, the way I got started was when I got access to Dolly, which is the AI program that I use to make these images. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just started playing around with it. And at first I was making like, you know, like dogs eating pizza or whatever, like the funny stuff that you can do with it. Right, right. Uh, but eventually I started, you can upload photos and you can edit them uh, in the software and I was like, what if I did my street? And so I did Irving Ave, I did Green Ave, which is the other street near me. And uh, I, I was like, damn, this is really, uh, am I allowed to curse? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like wow, this is really cool. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I was like, I showed my roommate and, um, and then I just kept making them and, um, And eventually I was, and I was just doing this to like, to kind of procrastinate. I was working on some music and uh, eventually I was like, I should probably like post these somewhere uh, because they're cool. And at first I made a website and I was like, no one's going to see this website. So then I started putting them on Twitter. Yeah. And uh, yeah. That's, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, Hey, I pulled up your website um, for the real Dutch bikes. So let's, uh, we'll put a bow on that here real quick. So sure. fantastic. This, I'm just so excited about this. This is really, really cool. And, um, I've, uh, I've had the honor to be, uh, Oh, there's Jason's why the Dutch bike is better. That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> Jason's so cool. Uh, he, he's been on the, the podcast, uh, a couple of times. And so it's, it's been, been wonderful you know, having his influence, uh, in the scene, you know, especially out on YouTube and, um, as well as on Twitter too, cause he's got a lot of stuff going on. A lot of people following him on Twitter, uh, probably a lot of people that are following you or, are you know, also, you know, fans of, of oh, his as well. Yeah. 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 That's something. And so let's get, let's pull up this Twitter, Twitter site again. Um, so this is the platform. This is where you decided to do it and it makes perfect sense. I mean, when I look at the, the number of followers that you have, you're almost to 24,000 followers, um, from basically from zero, right? I mean, you started putting these out there and you created better streets, AI, uh, talk about that just in and of itself to be able to, to literally take off like crazy. Yeah. I just started tagging like advocates that I knew, uh, and like organizations tagging Transalt and bike loud in Portland and stuff. And that was kind of how I got the account to initially grow because they started seeing it and retweeting it. And then obviously there's a huge pop, you know, a lot of, a lot of urbanist people on Twitter and, uh, it kind of just took off from there. It got some press like the next day, like literally the day after launching. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, that's just how Twitter works, I guess. It just, yeah. Well, what's great about it too is so let, let's pull up the most recent one that you have here just, just for fun so that people can get a sense as to what it looks like out on Twitter. Cause this is exactly what it looks like. You, you put a tweet out and you basically just have the, you know, the name of, of the street and you've got the before, and then you've got the after. And, you know, this is the, you know, this is off my iPad. So this is like a mobile, you know, version of what it looks like, you know, when, when you are interfacing with it as a, a cousin customer or consumer. And then of course you can always, you know, click on the photo and get a little bit more of, of a a zoom in on it and then be able to scroll back and forth between them. But I mean, that's, that's what it is. I mean, if you scroll down on your page here, you just got one after the other, after the other of, of these before and, and after. And of course the before is the current condition. And then the after is your stroke of genius, <laughs> your artistic, uh, you know, rendition of it. Uh, walk me through a little bit about, you know, those before and afters. What, what inspires you to a choose a particular street now that you're no longer just interested in your street? Um, how do you find your streets? And then what, 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 where's that creativity come, you know, come from in terms of, 
uh, you know, what would be best for this location? That's a super good question. And uh, we're actually looking for people to help make them now is kind of the next step for the project. So if you're watching and you want to help uh, get in touch, DMs are open. Um, but uh, yeah, I started off just making streets that I know and love and cities that I know and love. Uh, and it's create creatively, it's way easier to do that because I've had in my head what, you know, Hawthorne Boulevard in Portland should look like for four years. Like right. I know, you know, and um it is a little more challenging to do uh, cities or streets that I'm not familiar with, uh, but it also is kind of a, it can be a fun creative challenge. Like, um, well, I mean, cause you know, part of it is just like aesthetics, like what, what looks good, what matches the vibe of like the buildings and, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's uh, blow through a few of these just yeah. for fun. So uh, where is this? And, uh, and then we'll look, this is obviously the before. Yeah, it's a uh, it's Storrow Drive in Boston. Okay, which is a highway that just cuts right through this beautiful park and uh, disconnects the city from the waterfront. And then after your transformation, voila, the Netherlands. <laughs> Fantastic! All right, what's where's this? This is Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, okay, which is I've never been. Yeah, never been. Uh, it's Main Street, I think. Did they, did somebody serve this up to you and say, Hey, try this? They might have, you know, I have a list, I have a spreadsheet of like a thousand requests people have made. And sometimes I like take ones to do. And sometimes I just like browse around Google maps. Someone must have, cause I, I wouldn't do Cincinnati yeah. on my own accord. After your magic. Fantastic. <laughs> I love it. And here. Um, and that one, I, sh I just want to mention the Cincinnati one uh, is um, well, no, actually, sorry. I, I think I'm thinking of a different one, there, but there, you know, I might, there's definitely like, there's some progress, like this image, I think it, it might've been this one actually resulted in like, they're actually like making the street car free. Ah, um, okay. I mean, fantastic. There was already before, before but it, it helped. Yeah. And anyway. if I were to describe this, I mean, the, this, this particular image in Cincinnati is a yeah it's just a run-of-the-mill street it looks like it's uh one way and a couple lanes uh beautiful buildings all around so they I mean there's wonderful architecture there um but yeah i mean it, it 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 to me the scale of this is very very european i look at this and go oh yeah i could totally see this as being a people-oriented place and so your rendition what you did to it you put a fountain in the middle it's a complete pedestrian zone you've got some trees planted in there and so it really is a, a, a very very impactful um transformation and, uh, and and for for those people in the audience that are audio only um, please know that we're going to have a bunch of these photos um, out on the website on the the active towns website and the landing page for this episode uh, i know it's difficult when you're not able to see the visuals that uh, the zach and i are talking about so uh, we'll do our best to describe them a little bit uh, more in detail so that it's it's a little more uh, listenable as well okay so now we're at, at at this this looks like new york is this new york washington street in uh dumbo in the dumbo neighborhood in brooklyn okay dumbo neighborhood in brooklyn and so now we're uh a, a little bit different scale uh, a little bit taller it's uh which bridge is that right in the background there oh man i i think it's the manhattan bridge no yeah it's manhattan it's yeah, got to be the manhattan bridge yeah yeah okay yeah. good and and you can see one of the buildings you know framed in the in the arch of the 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 bridge there and uh and it's just all car space i mean you got two lanes of of parking car parking why on earth is there any car parking in new york brooklyn and uh, and then one travel lane and then transform voila we've got what <laughs> describe it what did you do here <laughs> yeah there's greenery there's benches there's just a place for people to chill and enjoy the view. Yeah, yeah. But what about the cars, Zach? What about the cars? And what about them? <laughs> so on. The, so this one is, is just a massive uh, freeway scene. I, I don't even know how many lanes. It's got to be 13, 14, maybe 17, 20 lanes. Uh, where is this and what are we going to do to it? 
This is Toronto. I forget the name of the freeway. Um, never, I've ever, I, well, I drove on it once, but yeah, it's a freeway in Toronto. Yeah. Craziness. Okay. And the, is, this is what we did to it. We have, it, this looks like a bullet train. Yeah. That's <laughs> one of the prompts that I use for Dolly is a European style train. Yeah. Yeah. And not only is, yeah. is all of those lanes have magically just kind of disappeared uh, and, and the train is now in there, the high speed train. Uh, we also have planted a few things. What have you planted here? Yeah, there's some trees. There's a there's also a lake now. Yeah, it's like what what can you do to make it like really pleasant? And, uh, you know, you have the train for transportation. You have the park for uh, just enjoying the scenery from the train or in the park, yeah. you know, if you're in the park. Itself. And that train will be able to carry just as many, if not more people than would normally be able to travel on these 20 some odd lanes of freeway. OK, another freeway. Which one are we looking at here? Oh, man, this is the BQE in Brooklyn. Okay. Or maybe the Queens part. Yeah, this is I, I've heard of this uh, this uh, particular road before. Um, it's uh, notorious. <laughs> and oh, my oh. gosh, what did you do to this thing? Well, now it's a park. Wow. There's a train underneath. Fantastic. Looks like you could do some Frisbee golf on this park. And because it, it turns into a linear park, obviously, with the the highway torn down and what was previously something that divided the neighborhood. Now you can stitch the neighborhood back together again with this. All right. We're in another, this is a nice tree canopy. This is a great street. What is this? This is my street in Brooklyn ah, and cool. it's, green, it's green Ave in Bushwick. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, it's not a main street. It's just a random residential street, um, but it's gorgeous. Uh, the buildings are a little bit, I mean, the buildings all have tile or like uh, siding or whatever. So the buildings aren't particularly beautiful, but the trees are beautiful. And yeah, that's really, yeah. yeah. So your vision for your own street, rather than two lanes of, of car parking, and it looks like a, a center lane, is this a yield lane or, or, or is there enough space for two cars to pass uh, going each direction or is it just one way? It's one way, okay. uh, so enough space for one car to double park and um, maybe enough space for another car to go around, but, Got it. you know, it's... Yeah. Yeah. It's relatively narrow in, in, in all intents and purposes, and I would imagine that this street actually existed uh, prior to the automobile, so... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So now we have a fountain. Good move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so just describe describe your vision this is your street so describe what you decided and why do you, you decided to do what you did well it's a residential street in uh in brooklyn and for those who are familiar with uh with brooklyn and bushwick uh particularly there's a lot of hanging out on the stoop that happens and uh that's great it's a fun it's that's a good it's a fun you know you know, sort of cultural uh, thing. But the reason people are hanging out in the soups because there's, no, there's nowhere else to hang out. Right. By opening up the whole street to be sort of like a neighborhood hangout. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. And it's just more pleasant. And yeah. Safe. Very cool stuff. And, uh, oh, this is an interesting one. So this is a whole bunch of uh, motor vehicle lanes right next to a body of water. Um, there is a whole bunch of people hanging out by the body of water, uh, but that doesn't look super fun. It looks actually kind of familiar. What are we looking at? Yeah, this is Lakeshore Drive in Chicago. I was I was I was teasing you with that one. I, I used to live not far from here, so this used to be my morning jog uh, when I lived near the lakefront in in uh, the Dis Diversity Harbor area. So a little bit further north from where this photo is is taken. Uh, but then Lakeshore Drive turns into a beach. We're talking full on beach. <laughs> That's a beach. Yeah. 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 Very, very cool. I, and was there an inspiration to this? When you looked at Lakeshore Drive, you're just like, eh, no, nah, beach. Yeah, it was really like, I just, I mean, the photo, the even the original photo is like very iconic looking. Yep. So I just, yeah, I just had a feeling like it would be uh, yeah, just, yeah, 
ahead. Yeah, that's 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 so cool. Okay, now uh, this is West uh, Cary Street. Where is this at? Richmond, Virginia. Okay, Richmond, Virginia. Now we this is a a, a very very busy. Uh, it looks like it's mostly single story shops and uh, locations, and a bunch of cars parked. Uh, I got two travel lanes and another uh, a lane for for car parking. So it looks like it's a one way street here, and it's just really really auto centric. But you can tell that gosh, people would probably love to be able to walk and exist in this uh this space and then you decided to drop in a rainbow <laughs> <laughs> yeah this was kind of this was the reason i i wanted to show this on the podcast this was kind of like a an epiphany that i had with because before like a lot of them were like sort of european style like yeah. cobblestone and then i was like, well, what if we just there's so many more design options yeah yeah exactly well it, and of course I don't know if you visited Utrecht recently when they uh, uh, put down their rainbow uh, street. So, yep. Uh-huh. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Always Fantastic. a hit, the rainbow. All right. And now this is very, very suburban. I mean, most of the ones that we've looked at uh, so far had kind of a little bit of an urban, very fe a city feel to it. Uh, this has got uh, just a big, wide strode with a Qdoba and a sub shop and a few other things. Uh, and then voila, describe what we've got is, now, because you did, you not only did a street transformation here, you also did a land use transformation. Walk us through this. Yeah, this is the most effort I've put into any, I probably spent like an hour and a half on this, uh, getting all the details right. And this is, um, I forget the name of the road, but it's in fake London, Ontario. Um, not just bikes. Another homage to, uh, to Jason. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to show the potential of like what a strode would look like um, with the full array of improvements. Yeah, the infill and the water sidewalks, streetcar. Uh, yeah, everything. This is like what a street. This is what a lot of like streets look like in the Netherlands. So I really was just mimicking that. Right. Right. And uh We've got another one here. We're, what are we looking at now? This is a, another uh, little bit more urban street. Yeah, this is Thays Street in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. And uh, and then... Thayer Street. Thayer Street, yeah. Thayer Street. And uh, it's right in front of the, uh, the, the Avon Theater, Antonio's uh, Pizza Place. And now we've got uh, a nice brick. We've got some beautiful flowers. We've got another water feature in the middle here. All right. Wait a minute. Zach, yeah. something's, something's changed. Your background, it's totally different. And you have headphones on now. And you have a mic. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, what happened? Uh, what happened? <laughs> uh, welcome back. <laughs> we uh, you you had to to, to take care of a, a computer that was ailing, and uh, so we had a change of venue. But uh, you you are back. You're back in the studio, and uh, so for for those uh, astute listeners, uh, or excuse me, the 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 viewers that uh, notice, wait a minute, something's different about Zach. You know, so, it's all improvements, though. Oh, there you go. Excellent. So we were over here and um, talking a little bit about this treatment. You had something else you wanted to, to say about this. There's something fun. What's the scoop? Yeah, it's one? just cool because I, I heard from a local advocacy uh, organizer, group organizer, that there's some momentum for actually making this street car free, partially as a result of our uh, of our images. Fantastic. That's great. And when you you had mentioned earlier, you know, some some of them, you know, take a little bit longer to, to work on, uh, you had mentioned like an hour and a half was a long time for one, uh, is the whole point for you to be able to kind of churn these things out pretty quickly and leverage AI and, and make it maybe, you know, happen like relatively quickly and not spend a lot of time on it. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely like a good balance to strike, uh, you know, cause you want it to be really good. Um, and with the AI in its current form, it does uh, take a bit of time to do that. Okay. Um, but What's cool is uh, AI, I mean, the, even the technology of making these images just came out like three, four months ago, basically. And okay. it's already so advanced in another year. It's, uh, it could be 
yeah. click of a button. Yeah, yeah. So I believe that we have some images that are like step by step. So let's let's start over here with this one and get get a sense. So this looks like a a, a, a block that we should all know. Radio City uh, Music Hall is there. So this is right in in New York. And uh, walk us through what you were uh, looking to try to do with this particular uh, sequence. And I'll uh, get over here to the, this step. So walk us through this. Yeah, so you paint out, they call it uh, in-painting, uh, is the new AI terminology. Uh, you, erase, uh, you, you erase the part that you want to replace. Um, in most cases, it's all the pavement and the parked cars. In some cases, you want to replace the sidewalk as well. Okay. Um, and then you type in uh, the prompt that you want it to replace it with uh, up top, okay. and then it it does its best right to do that. Yeah. Neat. Okay. Um, so, so th this sequence here, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can make sure that we can see all four or five panels here. So let me get to this. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. And so, and then I'll zoom in. This is where we were at. So we were here at this and you painted that out. And then now you're able to, to start dropping in options. So you. Yeah. Um, so, so basically what it does is it creates uh, four guesses. Uh, it used to be three. Now it's four, like of what it should look like. It basically four. Yeah. Just potentialities. Whoa, 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 uh, whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean this thing is actually guessing what should go in there? Yeah. Well, it's, 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 I don't know if guess is the right word. It, it kind of is depending on, well, it really depends how it's specific. using AI. Yeah. So it's, it's predicting or anticipating what, what parameters right. do you put in so that it thinks to put this in instead of more cars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is, this is, uh, this is the big, uh, this is what I was going to say is like, uh, uh, the, it, it determines what to put in based on how you, um, prompt it. Okay. So what you type in that box up there is everything. So like, um, and you can be as general, as specific as you want. Like when I first right. started doing it, I was typing in car free street. Right. And, and you said it would a modern spit pedestrian out a, promenade with lots of greenery, benches and people. And so it's taking those cues and then from an AI perspective, it's coming up with these options. That's yeah, awesome. Exactly. Wow. And what's the name of this program again? It's called Dolly. Dolly. Which is a okay. uh, D-A-L-L-E, which is a play on Salvador Dolly and Wally. Right. Yeah. Very, very cool. And so that's the panel <laughs> there with the, the four different options. <laughs> well, and, and yeah. I should I should be clear, like these are not, sometimes it, the options are terrible and you have right. to just keep making new ones. And then sometimes you have to edit, you have to take the best one and then edit it and yeah. be like, I don't like this bench. I want to make a different color or different, you know, a million yeah. different. It's, it's like painting, but with like a really good uh, sous right. chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that is just fascinating. So earlier you had mentioned that you were an artist and a musician. Uh, were you a, 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 like a graphic artist or what type of artist were you? Well, when I say artist, I don't know, like musician is I'm mostly like my like passion is making music. Okay. Um, and of course that for some reason, musicians don't get to be called, I mean, they do get to be called artists, but it's like almost right. a separate category. Yeah. yeah but yeah. Uh, I just... Yeah, artists. I don't know. I, I've dabbled in graphic design. I don't have any. Okay. You know. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not trained in it. Yeah. And and some some people they they have like the terminology of like oh yeah I'm a visual artist. And it's like oh okay <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> so, yeah. Exactly. I guess you're a visual artist now. <laughs> so you're yeah. you know especially when you did this one uh, I I suspect that this was a lot more work because like you said it took you a little bit longer. Mainly because I it, I th I would anticipate is because you you wanted to anticipate changing the land use patterns off to the side of the road. You're not just changing the road space. Everything though, even the road space takes a lot of work to get it to look really good. Right. Um. At least, you know, with the limitations of AI at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Um. Like even just yeah, sometimes it'll spit out like really weird looking people or whatever, and you have to <laughs> and, and you're like, like uh, no, 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 look demonic. no, no aliens. Come on, AI, knock it off. Um, Save so, it for the Mars urbanism. Yeah, exactly. 
so is this your full-time job? What do you, is this, is this actually making money for you yet at this point? I was originally uh, taking like commissions from like NGOs and also just people like activists who wanted to pay me to make these. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't sell a whole lot, maybe made like a couple and I also was taking donations and I did make right. like, a, like a couple hundred bucks um, yeah. from that. But uh, uh, now, uh, and maybe this is a good segue uh, or not into, into what we're kind of working on now, which is what I realized is um, like, it's great to have these amazing images, mm -hmm. but the the a Twitter account alone is not going to like make them actually happen in real life. Right. So over the last like month or two, I've been sort of developing this idea. Uh, and now with the team of people, we are developing this idea about like how we can make the images happen in real life. Okay. And uh, I'd love to tell you about that. Um, but uh, in terms of making money, um, this is kind of the new uh, product, I guess. And there's, right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, you know, obviously, I mean, I, I have a nonprofit advocates for healthy communities and there's that side of it. And I've been involved with nonprofits for many, many years. Um, there's not a lot of money <laughs> in, uh, you know, from a nonprofit side of, of doing this type of work, urbanism and, and transformation, street transformations. Um, that's not to say that you, you can't make a living. You can, but um, it, it's, it's not like the, you know, motordom. It's not like the automobile industry where they're literally throwing, you know, billions of dollars at, you know, shaping the, uh, the vision and, you know, the marketing. I mean, just the, the power that the, the automobile industry has in shaping what we see out of mo on media is, is just phenomenal. Yeah, well, not yet. I mean, the idea is to make it make good urbanism, uh, give urbanism the same firepower that uh, the auto industry has now yeah. in terms of marketing and, uh, you know, everything else that goes into it. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So it sounds like this is under the works. So you've got the grain, you, you, you've, you've had a viable, you know, product out there in terms of, oh, there's interest in this. And now it's just a matter of working with some of your partners and uh, I would assume maybe a board of directors or something like that to try to figure out, OK, well, how do we how do we make this happen? How do we actually take these visions and and help bring them into uh, into into real life? You know, because it's I mean, th this. The, the cool thing about the AI part of this is you're able to trans, you know, create these transformations and get them out there very, very quickly. Um, but they're really not that much different than what, you know, designers and architects had been doing, you know, the hard way. <laughs> First drawing them out and then, you know, and then designing them, uh, you know, with, you know, computer aided design. And that was kind of the joke too. You know, that was kind of the hit on them is like, oh, fine, you can draw all the pretty pictures, but nothing ever gets built. And so it sounds like what mm -hmm. you're saying is you want to get some things built. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, it's definitely like we're not surpassing the quality of professional like uh, architects or artists or whatever. Um, the thing that the AI allows us to do is to create these visions at scale. And um, cause this was the bottleneck before where you couldn't, you couldn't run an advocacy campaign for every single street in New York uh, because even just, I mean, like other infrastructure aside, like the website and volunteers and stuff, there's just no way to, to affordably uh, commission a, a, an image for every street. Now that that's possible, you can do things like what we're doing, which is build a platform for, street transformations worldwide. You know, the images are obviously like better uh, and people like want them to happen. So by building a platform that captures this demand and generates new demand by just means of traditional marketing, because once you have a centralized platform, you can market it in, in ways, traditional ways like bus stop advertising or Facebook advertising, or just people like sharing links to friends. Uh, you can, yeah, just by, by capturing all that demand. Okay. So yeah, by capturing and generating new demand, capturing that demand, um, you can then show, uh, 
Because ultimately, all that matters is that elected officials want this to happen. Like right. they're the ones who determine, like if a mayor. And so, by showing elected officials all this demand, well, that's that's how you make change. Right. And I think that's where this tweet thread comes in. Is you know this is an image, and you're you're like, okay, <laughs> let's let's get down to to work here, folks. And here's four ways that you can use these images to help make these things reality. Because really what we're talking about here is trying to leverage the technology, trying to leverage social media, trying to leverage other platforms for people to reimagine what their streets are like. And that's a phrase that I use frequently because that's the same as like open streets, you know, 34th 34th Avenue is like a, a great example of, oh, it's an open street now and you can reimagine what streets are for. And so this is a way that you can help leverage reimagining what this street can be. So then we go over to the four steps. So walk us through these four steps. Cool. Sure. Yeah. So first one, share them online. Uh, online is the best way to market stuff at scale. And, uh, uh, and, and, I don't think um, advocacy, uh, Safe Streets Advocacy has taken full advantage of uh, the the power of the internet yet to do this. Um, every time I mentioned uh, Reddit on uh, in this, uh, and every time I, um, well, I posted a couple images to different city subreddits and I saw other people post them and they always get to the top of the subreddit. Like the Providence car free street was on, got like 2000 upvotes and was on the top of that Reddit for a few days. Yeah. So it's just like this, this stuff is so popular and, uh, putting it on TikTok and Facebook and stuff is like just a crazy thing, like fire hose of attention. Uh, that's totally unprecedented for this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, it, so, and is that one of the things that you're doing is you're also putting these things out on TikTok and uh, these other platforms as well? Uh, we'd like to, yeah, we don't have like a TikTok person yet. Okay. If you're a TikToker and we don't, if you're passionate if we haven't, about this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I saw one person, uh, he goes by like Yimby something on TikTok and he posted a video about better streets AI and it like kind of went viral. And some people told me nice. they found out about it through TikTok. Okay. So, and there's like a huge, there's a lot of like urbanists on TikTok. So uh, there's more. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, it's growing daily. I mean, one of the first ones was uh, Mr. Barricade um, out of California. And, and uh, that really just somebody getting out, out there on the platform and, and talking about streets uh, really, I think, you know, got that, that flywheel of momentum uh, heading in that direction. I don't know if I will be heading in that direction, but you never know. You probably will be. It's yeah. if you want to stay on top of it. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. well, I don't. Know. Yeah, I, well. I've, I, I, I have a secret that I haven't shared with anybody yet about a, a specific camera that I got that might be perfect for that. So that'll probably get yeah, unveiled cool. um, in my next Netherlands trip, which is going to happen at the end of uh, October. So good stuff okay so these are the four steps i mean it's basically you know again share them online get it out there put up flyers doing the the that's like the block to block stuff it's like people to people uh and and talking about it and you know engaging within your neighborhood you know get and again the the number three is like presenting them at that community meeting again that's that that personal touch of like really having these conversations with people at along your street and you know really getting that and it says demand results from politicians and really there's a step in between number three and number four is is really helping the bringing the politicians along too and bringing them up to speed with hey, this is kind of what's happening. Their phones ring off the hook and they get a deluge of uh, emails uh, from, you know, the NIMBYs that are like, no, don't take a a parking space away. Don't change our streets. We want things the way they are. And so that's that next step. You know, that's the three point A and B is engage those politicians and really work with them and bring them along. Um, Demand is a little bit, tough a little bit harsh in the interim stage because you have to at least help try to bring them along um and you know and then it's like it you know it's that demand it's like no 
we're serious. This is quality of life issues for us. And, you know, we, we want to see this and do we have your commitment? And if you're, you know, if, if you're not committing to this and you won't do this, you know what, we may run a slate of candidates to run against you that will do it. And then you vote them out. So vote them out. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, yeah, 100 percent. Um, a lot of I should I also want to add like a lot of like politicians do already like want to do this stuff. Yeah. Um, and they just need sort of like a push, I guess. Well, they, 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 don't, they, they, they need the three and the two and they, they need that momentum. They need to know that the constituency has their back. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Boom. So talk, talk yeah. about this. Talk about transform your city. Yeah. So this is just like a really rough mock up. But just to visualize like what we're working on, it's basically like change.org, but for better streets. Okay. It's just surprising to me how like before now, like this platform, it doesn't exist. There's nowhere to see this stuff. Right. And uh, it's such an obvious like thing that the world needs. Right. Um, well, and I think you said it, it's, it's, it's like, you know, change.org or it's like any other type of petition type of thing. Um, uh, I see them come across my radar screen a lot of, you know, it's like, hey, sign this petition. We need to get this to, uh, you know, over to the, the politicians and to the city council to, to understand that we want this street to to remain car free. I mean, for instance, I, I signed a petition or, or uh, you know, shared some information on a petition um, that was all about a street in Boulder that had been car free th from the pandemic era. And they decided to, to open it back up to cars and car parking. And so people were freaking out about it and et cetera. And so they were signing petitions. And so it sounds like what this is, is more formal formalized for that pur purpose. Is that correct? Yeah, it's formalized. And it's also like one of the problems with change.org for that kind of thing is it's all, uh, the, all the petitions are disparate. So if you sign right. a petition for that street to remain car free, you're also likely to be someone who wants all the other streets to be car free and protected bike lanes on these streets. And um, by having it all in one place, someone clicks, I want this on this uh, in the screenshot, and then it'll show them here are some other uh, streets. Do you also want this? Uh, or they could even, on the city, they'll be like, one page for like all the visions in Boston and they can click, right. I want all these in one click. And, um, that's really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So why car free? Well, as opposed to car light or yeah. 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 As opposed to car light. And the reason why I asked that is I, you know, I, I recently had, um, uh, Amelia, uh, Hannah from the, uh, the car free mega cities campaign. So it's the, the campaign that's currently um, a, a challenge between New York and London and Paris. Uh, and they, it's called the car free mega cities, but really what they're trying to do is to break car dependence. So it's not really car free per se, but it's, it's trying to, um, you know, transform our environment so that it is more, I don't know. We, we, we talk about, you know, we talk about, you know, the, the Netherlands a lot, you know, it's, it's a little bit more user friendly than this. In, in other words, it's not car dominated. Is, is that sort of the spirit is, is that it's, it's not necessarily, you know, a hundred percent car free. It's just like, Hey, let's get this back in balance. Yeah. It's 100% about just copying the Netherlands. Like yeah. they're <laughs> Which like, they they're, they're like, against. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> dude, yes. In what sense though? Um, they recognize that every place needs to make sure that they can learn from the things that they have learned from, but it's not a copy paste. You, it has to be context sensitive to, to the environment that you're in. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what yeah. they would tell you. Yeah. I mean, that's a very diplomatic, uh, well, I guess, but it's also like, uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, it depends what you mean by copy paste. Cause I guess what I meant by that is like the general like principle that like every street has a, a function that it should serve, right. uh, whether it's like an arterial or like a commercial street or like a residential street or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, 
that's I guess that's the fundamental problem in the U.S. is that like right. it's roads, like streets are function are masquerading as roads and vice versa. Well, yeah, and and this um, is a great this is a great street to 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 use as an example. So, in a Dutch context, um, you know, this actually may not ever be a car free street, but it would probably be, and this is one of the things that a lot of people don't realize about the Dutch network is that like when you look at their cycle network, um, the, the part that gets all the attention is the, the separated and protected facilities. But in reality, 70% of their entire cycle network is actually shared space with automobiles. It's the feet struts and it's the, you know, the slow residential streets where there's mixing of, of, of cars, people driving, motor vehicles and pe- motor vehicles parked and in and people on bikes and in some cases um like in utrecht uh, recently they removed their protected bike lanes and transformed that street into a feet strut and the reason was is because the number of people on bikes outnumbered the number of people in cars eight to one and so i noticed this in amsterdam yeah. a lot they yeah. were also removing yeah yeah yeah, it's and fascinating. It, it is fascinating. That's the great thing that I love. And one of the reasons why the, the Dutch experts advise not against, you know, copy pasting is because theirs isn't done yet. They're constantly transforming it. They try something, they see it, they they see how everything works. And then as situations change, then they tweak it again. And so it's a constant evolving, uh, dynamic environment, but with the key tenant of is this a people oriented place and it will this serve yeah. all ages and abilities in active mobility. And it's also like the reason that they're able to, to make feet is, is because they, it's like, that's where they're at in terms of like, and they, they do things to restrict car traffic and stuff too, like on that street in, in Utrecht to, yeah. uh, to my understanding. But, but it's like that design also wouldn't necessarily work in the U S uh, because they're so far ahead of us that they can, uh, like, yeah, I, I guess as long as you meet like the bare minimum of, of like, is it safe to bike on the street and, uh, pleasant to walk? Yeah. Um, like, you, yeah, it, that'll take you yeah. a long way because we're no, we're no, we're nowhere close to that. <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. Now, earlier you had mentioned that you had wanted to to move to the Netherlands and do this, and you mentioned uh, that it, that is possible for um, uh, citizens of the United States to do that. Uh, that program is actually called the DAFT, the Dutch American Friendship Treaty, and uh, that was put in place in the 1950s after World War II as a thank you, you know, for for the help that the 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 U.S. Uh, gave to uh, help helping liberate the Netherlands. Uh, from German occupation, and uh, there are other reasons, but that was one of the main reasons. Um, are you are you still planning on doing that? Oh, I did. Yeah, I just moved back to New York after living in Amsterdam for about six months. Okay. Um, okay. I missed New York. I loved Amsterdam, but uh, okay. Yeah, I, I I realized there's more to life than bike lanes. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Dutch bikes. And Dutch bikes. Yeah. And Dutch bikes. Um, but, but you're bringing them back here, so. There you go. I'm bringing it back here. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I <laughs> love it. Zach, it has been such a pleasure chatting with you today. It was so wonderful to see uh, Better Streets AI hit the, you know, hit the airwaves and hit Twitter. And it was fun to just kind of watch it take off. And it's been an absolute pleasure uh, having this opportunity to meet you. Thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Zach Katz. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Leave a comment down below and uh, be sure to share this episode with a friend. Uh, that's the best way to grow the movement is for somebody to hear it from you. So please pass it along. And if you haven't already done so, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on the subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell so you can customize your notification preferences. So you so you hear about when I have new episodes coming out as well as other videos, profile videos. And many of you know that I am actually in the Netherlands right now as we speak, <laughs> as this video is coming out and I'm filming a lot of wonderful things here and, and getting some more interviews too. So I'm really excited about sharing that content with you here in the future. Uh, well, that's it for now. So until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health and happiness. Cheers. 
Also sending out a very big thank you to all my amazing Active Towns ambassadors who are directly supporting my efforts through Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, the YouTube Super Chats and Super Thanks, as well as buying things from the Active Towns store and making donations to the nonprofit. Every little bit helps and is greatly appreciated. Thank you all so very much.